We are Ham Radio. Picked up a little something at Giga Parts while I was in Huntsville. Can you guess what it was? <laughs> Not the coffee, but this awesome cup. I had to pay for it, but it's all good. I love me some Yesu. Welcome back everybody, it's Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader, and I'm back with another video. And you know what? We're gonna talk about DV Switch again. Because it works with All Star Link 3 now. It works with the ASL3 version and it works really, really well. Some things are a little bit different, but uh, I'm learning a little bit more about it as we go along. I want to say thank you to the guys over at DV Switch. Uh, I, I don't know all their call signs right now, and I hope to get better acquainted with them in the future because they make an excellent product that benefits a lot of hams. And you know, Dad Gummit, I appreciate it. I really, really do. And I want to get this right. So without further ado, here's DV Switch on All Star Link 3, the Raspberry Pi version. No reason to believe it wouldn't work on the other versions as well, but I just haven't done it yet. So take a look. All right, folks, we're going to begin our journey here at the landing page for All Star Link 3, and we're going to install DV Switch. Now, assume first that this tutorial has already set up a successful single node All Star Link setup, complete with Almon 3 running in the background. It's logged in, which we can actually log out of this for now because. So now that we have a functioning ASL3 node, we want to install DV Switch. But before we do, we've got to prepare a private node for the connection. This is the public node. Our 576333 in this instance is our public All-Star node number. This number is applied for by you and handed out by the allstarlink.org folks. But we need to add a private node, which will show up down here so that we can toggle our connection to DV Switch. So, to do so, we need to get into the All Star Link menu. The first thing we're going to do is go to Node Settings, All Star Node Setup Menu, and we're not going to update our current node, but we're going to add a node. And we give it whatever number we want. And I'm going to do 1883. This number has to be lower than the number 2000. It could be 1999 on down. I don't know if it has to be four digits or not. I've never gone below four digits. I've never had a need to, but here we are. So I chose 1883. Come to the next menu and it's, it's asking us, do we want a hotspot half duplex, hotspot half duplex with no courtesy tones, repeater, hub, and we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom, hit none of the above, show all settings. And there you see our node number. Now for right now, we're not gonna put in a node password, but we can put in a node call sign if we want. And I believe it might be required, but it it probably isn't. But I like to do it anyway. Radio interface, let's hit that. It says no radio interface or hub node. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom and choose number five, USRP. And duplex type, for right now, hit the space bar. And it should be at half duplex with no telemetry link. Hit OK. And for now, we choose half duplex. I'm not completely clear if I should make this full or half duplex. I feel like I should be making it full. But for the testing I've done so far, I'm choosing half duplex at this point. I may go back later and change it. So duplex type for now should show as zero. Post node status, no. Node access list is open. And we don't need to interface tune CLI because there's no radio on a private node. So let's hit back and back. And let's restart asterisk. And you could hear the node behind me restarting. Now you'll want to come down here and make note of your asterisk password. And if you want to change your port, I'm using a non-standard port because the standard port 4569 is already in use on my network. I put in a non-standard port and I've already forwarded it in my home router. All right, now that we've gotten to this point, let's exit out of the ASL3 menu. Let's change the directory to Etsy, Almon3. And let's do a sudo nano almon3.ini. And we'll scroll down here to the bottom. 
Now you can see the uh, default node of 1999 is commented out and 576333 is present. But we want to add bracket 1883. Add a line of host equals 127.0.0.1. Uh, user in this case is going to be admin and the password I make it match the asterisk password a9 FD now granted this is going to be different for you this is automatically generated on each install so every time it's going to be different okay so once we've got that in there we're gonna hit control X yes to save enter to exit and we're gonna reboot the node Okay, our node, our node has rebooted and we're going to reconnect back to it through the cockpit. And I'm also going to come back to the Almon 3 page and refresh it. And looky there, we've got two nodes now, our 576333 and our 1883 private node. And they're both talking to the asterisk server. So let's log into it. And I've got this one set at the default. Yeah, that was correct. I've got this set at the default. Um, Almon3 username password is Almon3 and password. Which, you know, if I was to continue, I'll come back and save that or change it later. So let's make sure that this node connects to this node so we know that our toggle works. So I'm going to come up here, hit connect, type in 1883, and hit execute. And the connection is established and we have our private node connecting to our public node. All right, we know that works now. So let's go ahead and disconnect it. Here's a nifty little nugget since the birth of ASL3, Almon3. Right here next to your connected node, you can see this little red square with the X in it. When you hover over it, when you click on that, it automatically chooses disconnect. It automatically chooses that node number. And all you got to do is hit execute. And now your two nodes are disconnected. Node one, eight, eight, three, disconnected. And now they're disconnected. So let's get busy and install DB Switch. So we're going to go to the terminal and we've got to install the repository. So I'm going to type in sudo. Actually, we can do this install as root. So I can type in sudo su and that will put us in the root and then all I've got to do is start pasting in your commands and there's that down and now let's do the chmod on that file so that we can make it executable and then we can run bookworm All right, and it's finished the DB Switch repository install. So if you want, and you probably don't have to, but I like to do it, just do an apt update. And it says all packages are up to date. So now we're just gonna do, oops. We're gonna type in apt space install space DB Switch dash server. Hit enter, and away we go. Now, at the first prompt, it says, after this operation, 411 megabytes of additional space will be used. Do you want to continue? Well, sure I do. Sit back, get yourself a cup of coffee, relax, and watch the magic happen. Okay, now, that part is done, so here's the first thing I recommend. Reboot. Oh, we're in sudo. We're in root already, so we can just type in reboot and let it go away. Okay, now that our reboot's over, we've got to log back in and get back to our terminal. So we're going to cd user local, whoops, local dbs. And this is the db switch 
directory for configuration or the configuration script. So let's type in sudo dot slash dbs. And here we are at the DB switch main setup menu. And the first thing it wants you to do is change the language settings. I don't know why, but I always like to hit yes, hit English, and then it tells me, hey, you're already using English. So I don't know why, I just have to do that. First selection is the initial configuration for you can enter your call sign, your DMR ID, Brandmeister server, and AMB information. So let's hit that. And it says this process will ask for your call sign, your DMR ID, so have that handy. The USRP port and any hardware AMB information for the INI files. So call sign is case sensitive, so let's put it the way it should be in uppercase. And my DMR ID is 3143399. And it wants you to add a two-digit suffix, so it can be, it's basically what they call an SSID on the Pistar or on your Brandmeister server or, or on your TGIF setup. So I like to give it a unique number. The default is 11, but I want to set mine for like 17. Actually, I'm going to go with 21 because I believe, yeah, you can go all the way up to 99. I don't believe I've used 21 before. All it is is a two-digit suffix on the end of your DMR ID. Hit OK. D-Star module, I'm not configuring a D-Star module yet. Maybe someday, who knows, but not today. So I'm just going to hit enter. NX DNID, not going to do it, hit enter. USRP port, we're going to leave it at the default. And we're going to hit yes. So now I'm going to come down here and choose a United States Brandmeister server because that's where I am. And I have to type in my Brandmeister self-care password. It's basically your hotspot password it's for your DMR ID. Okay, the hardware vocoder. We don't have a hardware vocoder on this setup. We're going to use a software vocoder. And our input is finished, so let's hit yes and let it all start. Initial configuration is finished. DB switch server is up and running. And it is, but we've still got some configuration to do. All right, so we've done line one. 